I, you know, I, I work with young people now in the seventh or eighth grade. They outrightly declare, I am not good in science. I am Christopher Emden, a professor of science education at Teachers College, Columbia University. My work essentially is in reconnecting young people back to what is innately part of who they are. Um, you know, the inquisitive nature of a four-year-old, a three-year-old, the questions that are posed by a six-year-old about the sky and why is it blue. Um, and for kids who are part of hip-hop, the, the scientific attributes, the scientific skills, traits, and dispositions that are completely necessary to be hip-hop is, is what I try to connect them back to. Just letting them know that who they are is scientific. Um, the art of crafting a rap. Uh, the fact that your rap has to have complex metaphor and analogy. It has to be in meter and it rhyme. You have to be able to soak in the environment and make some sense of it. Um, your, your rap has to be approved by a community of folks who you have to prove that this is factual based. Like all those things are part of what scientists do to make sense of the world. So my work is in just showing young people that because they are a part of hip hop means that they have certain skills, dispositions, traits, attributes that are aligned to science. Um, and so hip hop becomes the conduit, it becomes a tool just because, you know, urban youth of color that I work with are so deeply immersed by hip hop. Hip hop has captured their imaginations in a way that no other phenomenon that we've ever known has. And so if hip hop can grab them like that, and science is a piece of who they are, and there is such science in hip hop, then why not make the connections? The art of writing a rhyme is writing. Um, the art of, of, of crafting a spoken word poem is public speaking. Um, if you're talking about your environment, that's current events. That's simple. You know, why, why don't we use the same mechanism to open kids up to disciplines and areas and possibilities that they've been locked out of? I mean, part of this work is a very inherently social justice piece to it. Um, you know, when we talk about achievement gaps, they triple or quadruple when it comes to science and mathematics. Um, and so if, if those are the areas where we need those gaps to be closed, those are the spaces where we need what I call these revolutionary educational practices. You know, you can't sacrifice um, the fun for the rigor. You have to be able to do both. So when you introduce these concepts to young people and they're writing their raps, you can say, oh, this is just great that you wrote this basic rap. You know, you have to say, well, in order for your rap to be really good, you have to have three scientific metaphors and analogies. You have to have a mathematical formula in there as well. Um, and then the last thing I would say is, and this is the beauty of my work with Science Genius, is that, you, and this is hip hop, it has to be competitive. It has to be competitive. So if you have a kid writing a rap to perform back for the class and they're just gonna perform it and sit back down, that works okay. If you let that kid know that there's another kid in another school who's also writing a science rap, and that kid at some point is gonna battle you. You know, that the idea of the unknown emerges and saying, well, I don't know if this kid is going to be really, really good. I don't know how much science this kid is going to put into this rap. I don't know how much math this kid is going to put into this rap. This, this notion of the inherent competition in, in the rap battle is so huge um, that, that it takes the, um, the content level expertise to a whole other level. I see the fruits of my labor every single time that I walk into a classroom and look into the eyes of a young person and listen to the questions that they ask. So there's so much beyond the curriculum that I'm like, where did you come up with this? And he was like, well, I'm writing my rhyme and I need to have you know, something that makes sense out of what happened you know, in, the big, in the Big Bang. And I'm like, but that's not even what you're learning in class. So when the kids ask me those kind of questions, I get it. When I look at the attendance rates in the schools, the kids who, who don't show up to school except on the Science Genius Day so they can study and write their rhymes. Um, when they have kids saying, I want to know why we don't have an advanced placement chemistry class in this school, um, that's when I know that this means something. Because it means then that they're not just using this as a way to understand what's going on, they're starting to see themselves as scientists. When, you, when a young person sees themselves as something, that changes their, their whole lifespan. I've had kids that I've done this hip-hop based approach to science instruction who worked with me in a physics class and was a ninth grader. And we were doing, you know, crazy things like, you know, finding out, you know, how you can measure equilibrium on a seesaw in a park across the street, talking about rappers' chains and finding out whether or not the metals in the chains were alloys or, or pure platinum, you know. We were having these really interesting conversations. He started seeing himself as a, as a scientist. And that, Edmund graduated from a school in the Bronx, New York, went up to SUNY Plattsburgh, 
and became a biochemistry major and graduated with a degree in biochemistry and is now a grad student at Columbia University with me. You know, those kind of stories show me that, you know, this is the work and the work can change the world.